NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, who led a life of great achievement and great tragedy in the most public and private way, ends her life in much the same fashion. There will be private funeral services in New York Monday, followed by burial at Arlington, the site of the eternal flame, alongside her husband and their two infants lost at birth. She died last night at 64. Here's NBC's Brian Williams. Today, John F. Kennedy Jr. spoke about the death of his mother. Last night at around 10.15, uh, my mother passed on. She was surrounded by her friends and her family and her books uh, and the people and the things that she loved. And she did it in her own way and on her own terms. And, uh, and we all feel lucky for that. And now she's in God's hands. Death came following visits by family members and friends who had come to say goodbye to Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. The cancer that was discovered just five months ago had spread quickly. Almost immediately, the now famous Fifth Avenue apartment building resembled a shrine. Hundreds came to see where she had lived and died, where there will be a private wake tonight. All my friends feel very bad today. She's the most beautiful person, but what she went through Yes, really. Sometimes yes. you Just wonder. In New York and around the country, front page stories added to a palpable sense of national loss. At the White House, where her portrait as First Lady hangs, she was remembered by the President and Mrs. Clinton. Even in the face of impossible tragedy, she carried the grief of her family and our entire nation with a calm power that somehow reassured all the rest of us. If she taught us anything, it was to know the meaning of responsibility to one's family and to one's community. Her great gift of grace and style and dignity and heroism is an example that will live through the ages. While millions of Americans today mourn the former first lady, overseas the reaction to her death was extraordinary, evidence of the effect her life had had. It's a beautiful image, I think, that remains with us all of this woman who lived much sadness in her life and yet did it with a great deal of dignity. We never saw Jackie Kennedy as a politician. We saw her more as an icon, of an icon of a certain age of elegance and, and as a role model. I mean, this was in many ways the first, uh, outside of Hollywood, the first American female role model for the rest of the world, uh, for a certain generation. Well, I was terribly shocked and sad that the big cancer had got her. It just seemed very young. At the Kennedy Library outside Boston, a chance for appreciation today. Visitors leaving messages in a book beneath her picture and taking stock of the loss. You're, you're losing part of Camelot. She was, she was the link back to that. And there's always been a fascination by people of that generation and people of my age that weren't really part of that. It, it just seemed like a wonderful, wonderful time in America. And I feel like we're losing a part of it. Late today, the family confirmed Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis will be laid to rest on Monday at Arlington National Cemetery near where President Kennedy is buried. Brian Williams, NBC News, New York. Jackie, that's how she was universally known, almost from the beginning, had a special place in the hearts and lives of those generations of American women who witnessed her coming of age. NBC's Betty Rollin tonight on how that Jackie is remembered. One of the reasons Jacqueline Onassis had such an impact on several generations of American women was the mix that she was. Incredibly glamorous on one hand, a mom on the other. She was classy. Early in the 1960 presidential campaign, her husband's handlers worried that she was too classy. But she was authentically classy, and people loved her for it. She was utterly feminine. But Betty Friedan, the founder of the women's movement, saw her as a feminist. She was quite serious in her later uh, uh, career as an uh, editor and publisher. I knew writers that worked with her. And she was, no just, she was not just a token. Uh, I, I, I mourn her loss. Who would have thought that Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis would have gotten a job, a job that she actually went to and did and went to the Xerox machine? 
She reinvented herself and kept up with the time. The public never got enough of Jacqueline Onassis, but it wasn't scandal they wanted. In that sense, says Richard Stolle, her celebrity was unique. The American people, and especially American women, held her in many ways to a higher standard than most celebrities, and she never disappointed them. Nor did she ever let them get too near. Since the assassination of her husband, she gave almost no interviews. And for that, especially now in this age of tell-all and sell-all, the public and even the press admired her more. I have more respect for her for not talking to the press than I would have if she had talked to us. And throughout her life, during the good times and the bad times, Jacqueline Onassis was a woman of extraordinary culture and style. She taught us further as we watched her from afar that the presence of style does not mean the absence of content. Betty Rollin, NBC News, New York. What is there about Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy Onassis that has kept us so transfixed for so long? Several things, I think. First, she was from another time and place. The old money neighborhoods, polo fields and hunt clubs, the kind of girl featured in Life magazine, out of reach to most young men unless they had the magic and the money of a John Kennedy. And when she became first lady at age 31, it was a stunning transformation of that ill-defined role, occupied as it had been by grandmothers with permanence and sensible evening dresses. Jackie was more regal than certified royals, more beautiful than most movie stars, more stylish than anyone else in the room. Even those uncomfortable or unhappy with her airs were impressed by her innate sense of grace. Her comportment at the time of the assassination and funeral was the stuff of legends. If we had to go through this awful ordeal, we felt in a way privileged to follow her lead, which made the Onassis business all the more difficult to accept. Ari Onassis seemed only to be about money. We wanted Jackie to keep the flame. What she wanted, she would not say, not even when she became a widow a second time. When the stories of John Kennedy's extramarital activities began to emerge, she began to regain public sympathy, characteristically, without encouraging it. Her lifelong cool and elegant style was not shaken, not even by sensational assaults by authors and journalists. Instead, she created a new, intensely private New York life as a book editor. And through it all, she stayed publicly pleasant, never snapping at the ever-present photographers, but never volunteering either. And in this age of celebrity tell-all, in 30 years, the woman who could have told the most never told even the smallest secret in public about her husband and their time together. She was not the girl next door and never pretended that she was. She was her own woman without apology from the moment we met her until the day she died. And we have known very few like her. <laughs>